everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our 10th lab exercise on hydrologic functions in ArcGIS Pro. And in this one, we're going to look at the topographic wetness index. I'm going to show you how to calculate it a couple different ways. And just as background, this idea of a topographic wetness index is popular amongst ecologists. I've had a lot of questions about it over the years. Now, TWI is, a, is an index that combines two topographic phenomena and combines slope and catchment area to describe the tendency of water to collect in an area. Areas with high TWI values might be more likely to have higher soil moistures, might have different pH values, different water quality characteristics, might be more likely to support water or moisture dependent species. Yet TWI increases as slope decreases because water moves more slowly in areas with shallow slopes. So TWI also increases as the catchment area increases because larger areas collect more water in general. This index therefore based entirely on the shape of the landscape and is entirely unaffected by climate factors or anything in the substrate or the soil. Now in the desert southwest of the United States, this topographically based estimate of water concentration may not be as much of a driver of ecologic processes as in more mesic environments. In fact, the two people who originally proposed this idea, Beaven and Kirby in 1979, described this as a model for humid temperate areas. In xeric environments like Arizona, water concentrations are more often associated with exposed aquifers, uh, springs in other words, rather than by TWI. But this is a popular way to describe the landscape and it does provide useful information. So I'm going to show you how to calculate it here. So as I showed in the main lecture, TWI is defined as the specific catchment area divided by the percent slope at any particular site. Then you just take the natural log of that quantity. So it really comes down to just two variables, percent slope and specific catchment area. And you know, we, we already got percent slope. We calculated it back in lab exercise nine. We're gonna have to modify it a little bit. Uh, lab exercise nine calculated percent slope where 100% slope was actually reported as a value of 100 the TWI equation wants that as a, a value of 1. 1 equals 100%. So we're going to have to divide the raster by 100. That's okay. A specific catchment area is a little more complicated, but it turns out our flow accumulation raster will serve the purpose just fine with only a minor modification. Now, Technically, specific catchment area is a little different than catchment area. It's defined as the catchment area divided by the width of the watercourse at the place you calculate the value. But the way raster-based flow analysis works, and when we're calculating TWI for every cell on the landscape, well, this whole process forces the water to be flowing through a single cell. So in this case, the specific catchment area is just divided by the width of the cell. And since the flow accumulation is reporting the values in cell counts, not actual area, well, then all we have to do is divide the cell count by one. And that's just the same as the cell count itself. Then we multiply that by the cell size in square meters to get the, the uh, specific catchment area that will be used in the equation. There's a couple of mathematical issues with the general equation here that we need to work around. Uh, first off, we're dividing by percent slope. Well, what if the landscape is flat? That means the slope is zero, and you can't divide by zero. So in order to get around this, we usually add a small constant to the slope values. So in this example, we're going to be adding 0 0.0001 to all the slopes. Another problem is that uh, you can't take the natural log of zero, or any log of zero, and what if our specific catchment area is zero? This would happen at the tops of ridges where there is no catchment area at all. Well, in order to get around this, we are gonna add a value of one to the this, to this specific catchment area. Okay, so let's get started. Like I said, we're gonna do this two ways. First off, I'm gonna show you how to do the use the raster calculator tool to do it. We're gonna to have to make a kind of a complicated calculation string in the tool, but it will work. Okay. Now, we gotta do several things, right? Um, we're adding constants, we're uh, calculating specific catchment area, etc. This equation will do it if you have your flow accumulation raster named this way 
and your Flagstaff percent slope name the same way I do. So I'm just copying this and pasting it in. But rather than just hit go, I want, I want to take a look at this. Um, first off, remember what, what's going on, how we have to get around the mathematical problems. First, the Flagstaff percent slope, we have to divide it by 100 to get it down to the range, you know, where 100% slope is equal to value of 1. That's what we got happening right here. Flagstaff percent slope divided by 100. Then we add a small constant to it to avoid the division by 0 problems. As far as flow accumulation goes, we have the flow accumulation raster, but we're adding 1 to it. What this means is we treat each individual flow accumulation cell as being part of its own catchment area. So it's a way of getting around the math problem, and it's also realistic because the cell itself is contributing to its watershed. So we add a value of 1 to it. So this, this part of it adds a value of, constant value of 1 to the flow accumulation. Then we multiply it by the cell size in square meters right here. So this is x times y. And finally, we take the whole quantity and take the natural log of it. So this does all those steps all in one single equation. So we just hit run, goes to work, and there it is, our topographic wetness index, our TWI raster. And if we zoom into it, we can see some details, and we can see that like this whole area apparently is a pretty good TWI value, and it is in the bottom of a drainage, no surprise. Shallow slopes, lots of contributing area. Probably this area does have a pretty decent uh, vegetation and soil moisture you know, compared to some of these slopes up on the side of the hills. All right, so you can use that equation. You might have to modify it for uh, the cell size, for the names of your rasters that you're putting into it, but that'll certainly work. Another way we could have done this is to use the math tools, and even better, we can put it into a model. And so I want to show you how to do that as well. So let's, let's, uh, we can leave that on. All right, so we're going to create a brand new model. We're going to run, we're going to use the divide, the plus, the times, and the natural log tools. These are all in the spatial analyst math tools. So let's come to our catalog. This is my default geodatabase. I'm just going to right click in here, do new toolbox, and I call this TWI. Within the toolbox, I'm going to make a new model. Okay. I'm going to close that for now. I'm just going to change the name here. Okay, now let's start editing this. Okay, so first off, we need to divide our percent slope by 100. Let's come back over to here. Now let's open up our tools. Let's go to the divide tool. We can just drag this in. Okay, we're dividing Flagstaff percent slope by a value of 100. So let's just open this up. Input 1 is Flagstaff percent slope. Divide it by 100. Okay. Now we're adding a value of 0 0.0001 to that. So that is the add. Or no, actually, that's the plus tool. Just drag plus in. So we're adding a constant value to to this. So we just draw a line here, and that becomes our first value. Now we add a value of 0 0.001 to that. Okay, so this is our modified percent slope. In the equation, that would be this tangent slope right here. So we've got this part of it taken care of. Now we need to get the specific catchment area. So we're calculating the specific catchment area is the flow accumulation value plus a constant of 1 and then multiplied by the the size of the cell in square meters. So first off we're going to use the plus tool to add 1 to flow accumulation. Plus first one will be flow accumulation and we're adding a value of 1 to it. Hit okay. 
then we are multiplying that sum by the cell size and rather than multiply it by this value twice I'm just going to multiply it by this which is the square of that all right so that is the times tool right here drag it in that's this value we'll put it as the first one times I just copied out this will give us the specific catchment area okay let's just clean this a little bit so now we've got uh, this is from the percent this is the the uh, denominator of our equation this is the specific catchment the numerator we need to divide this value by this value so that's the divide pull that down here so we are dividing the specific catchment area by the percent slope, the modified percent slope. Let's clean that. All right. Now we have a, a raster that represents this whole portion inside. So we just have to take the natural log of it. So that's the natural log tool right here. We're just running that tool straight in there. Okay. Now, let's, let's uh, take a look at it. Auto layout. Now, this, 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 and this are all intermediate rasters. I don't really need to keep them, so I just want to. I'm going to right click and make sure they're set to be intermediate. They are cool. This one, I want to give it a better name. Let's call it. Uh, TWI from model. Okay. And I want this to be automatically added to my display. So I'm just going to turn that on. See, now it's got a check mark. Okay. All right. The model is built. We just have to validate it. Looks good. We hit run. It goes to work. Okay. All done. Now we can take a look at it. We can see that the ranges of values are the same. If I turn this one off and on again, it looks just the same. So it produced the exact same output as running it through the raster calculator. Now, if you remember the uh, geoprocessing lecture, we talked about models and how you could set some things to be model parameters. That would be a kind of a cool thing here. Um, if you set like the percent slope here to be a parameter and the flow accumulation to be a parameter, the output raster to be a parameter, and the cell size to be a parameter. You, there's actually a tool that will give you the cell size of a raster, but you know, for the time being, uh, the cell size here was in this value here. Make this a parameter. Then we save that. Now, if we go back to our, our model right here, this is the one we just created. If we double click on it now, it will ask us for all of this data and then just run that model uh, internally. And so we can run this on different slope rasters, different regions, calculate uh, TWI for different areas. We just had to make sure we get uh, the cell size right. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks so much. Hope you enjoy it. You take care.